Hi everyone, it's Evelyn from Twin Flames 3344. Hope you're all doing well. I want to thank everyone for their likes, subscribes, shares, and of course your comments that I love responding to. And uh, we're going to do a Divine Masculine read today. Today is, um, what day is it? It is December 9th, 2017. And I'll go into that for a mo in a moment. But it started snowing this morning, and I wanted to show you because it's so beautiful. And I'll take a second to just come in. So that's the picture from my from my couch. So I'm not sure if I wanted. It. I'm actually um, traveling to see my daughter tomorrow. Um, she's coming home for Christmas break, so I was going to go out there and spend some time with her first, and we're actually traveling. She's in Arizona. We're traveling from Arizona while we're there to Atlanta and back because she wanted to check out Atlanta because she might want to move there. So I'm, I'm hitting a couple grid points, I guess. Um, I'm going to go through the energies that I'm picking up. Um, and I have a few male headings, and then we'll get into the Divine Masculine read. I did do a summary for those who are too impatient to wait through the whole hour, which I completely understand. Um, and then I'll go through the read formally and pull some cards at the end like I usually do. Um, and also, um, I was thinking of doing a, uh, a video with my daughter about, uh, you know, children of Ascension and the Twin Flame journey and their perspective in this, which I think would be a great help for not only twins, but, you know, parents of divorces and that kind of thing to understand the perspective of a grown child and what they've been through. Um, so anyway, we'll get into that. Uh, hopefully I can get that done this week. Um, okay, the energies for today. It is, like I said, December 9th, 2017. And that is the Hermit, is the 9th, and the... Sorry, I have a lot of notes. The Hermit is the 9th, and then today is... The, the entire date is 31-4. And 34... And 31-4, I'm sorry, I am a Virgo, so I'm probably going to be very affected by Mercury, and I tend to screw up when I'm speaking anyway, so please forgive me and bear with me. Um, 31 is the Five of Wands, which is all about change and conflict. It's really the competition for in life, you know, for riches and for the great life, um, and it's very physical. So there's a lot of fire going on today, and it is conflict. So don't get started with anyone. Don't react. It's a reminder. It's a test, actually, not to react to things that you would normally react to. And I'm going to go through some mail headings, too. Um, and I, I'm going to preface that, uh, that some of these mail headings are actually tests as well to see if you're going to be triggered by these things. And are you going to, are you going to believe what someone else tells you? Or are you going to believe your own truth, your own intuition, above everyone else? Okay, so I want you to pay attention to that when you hear them. So, the ninth, of course, is the hermit. So it's all about isolation, and that's perfect for my situation with the snow outside. You know, don't we like to uh, isolate ourselves and, you know, curl up by the fire on a snowy day? Um, but that is the theme for the Divine Masculine read today, you know, the hermit isolating and conflict. And how are we all, all going to react to those situations? We're supposed to rise above these things and not react. Certainly um, stand up for yourself, but not in a reactive way, in an informative way. And if needed, you walk away from the situation. Um, some of the energies that were coming up for me from yesterday till today, and maybe things for you guys to think about and clear, and I had a huge uh, past life wounding come up, I think it was yesterday, 
very much by surprise. I was actually doing, um, um, uh, Janet from Wounded Warrior, Warrioress had talked about um, binaural beats and I was looking for, uh, you know, just a different meditation to do. So I tried out some of those beats at the 432 hertz. And um, I, this is where this, this major past life wound came up, which caused a bit of a purge, but it was all good. Very illuminating. I don't want to go into it too much, but uh, so the, ener the other energies I got, and that had to do with this, is uh, loyalty. What is your loyalty to? And is it to yourself? And spirit's connecting with me. Um, frustration, a definite trigger. You know, why do you get frustrated about things? If you do get frustrated, you know, make sure to do some of that shadow work. If it comes up, stop yourself from reacting in that frustration and allow it. You know, that's always a solar plexus feeling when you get frustrated. But don't try to make that feeling go away. Go into it and feel it. Feel into it. Mm. Another site suggest is, um, my suggest is uh, Bonnie from Spiritual Acceleration. Um, she does this uh, wound clearing practice of going into the pain and then going under, under, under to go into the subconscious. I think you might find that uh, very illuminating. Um, and just even from the, the uh, South of France retreat, I went, in, I, I went on with uh, Mercedes Kirkle, the uh, Mary Magdalene heart path. She teaches about, you know, going into the pain. And that actually, that's actually what releases it. You know, we always try to make that feeling go away, go away, go away. The, the, the way to get it to go away is to actually to feel it and to love it, you know, you know, intent, put your intention on that location. And that, that helps with uh, uh, injuries as well. You know, you're putting your focus on that location. It's calling your attention to that location. That's what your body's doing when it gives you pain. It's calling your attention. So put your attention on it to either help it go away or help heal it. You have the power to do that. Um, so anyway, there's loyalty and frustration. Uh, no one is a victim came up. Very important because um, we all need to realize we need to clear our own wounds. It's not the other person doing something to us. It's us allowing it to be done to us and to not feel like the victim or feel like, you know, and I'm, I'm guilty of this too, of getting angry with God for putting us through the situation and the pain or the hurt that you feel. But it's really about freeing yourself from being a victim. And that means um, um, fighting for the right, but in a peaceful way, not in an outward, um, you know, let's get them way. It's all about doing the inner work for yourself. And that's how you help others. So just a reminder about that, because everyone feels that, you know, that victim mentality at times. And we're, this is what we're learning. It's, you know, we're learning to master our own pain and not blaming anyone else for it. It's not easy. Um, and then I was getting also that truth equals abundance. I also, my friend Regina had brought up that dark is just absence of light. So I wanted to remind you of that. You know, it's not good or bad. It's all part of, uh, of everything, the dark and the light. And the dark is just absence of light. So not to fear it. Um, and then father and son issues. But I was also getting in general parent and child issues, but especially for the divine masculine either them with their children or them and their father is what I was getting. Um, some of the other things that came up for me, um, I was getting some songs. Uh, yesterday I heard, I can't fight this feeling anymore. Um, <laughs> this was funny. Uh, the movie Species was on last night. It's an old movie. It's about, you know, a, a, uh, a man-made perfect woman who's actually a devil in disguise. So I want you to understand that parallel, that there is no perfect woman 
and if any jealousy issues come up or envy about other women who you feel are prettier than you or more perfect than you and that's confirmation about this it's very important for the divine feminine to just know her own worth and there's no such thing as perfect it was and it was really pointing out in that movie and I was wondering why am I watching this movie <laughs> it's really a crazy movie um, that she, you know, she was so beautiful and she seemed so perfect, but she was really the devil in disguise. So just be, you know, be reminded of that. Um, I don't want to miss anything. Um, another song I got yesterday. And this was for the Divine Masculine. Them feeling like God. That God has, you know, left them. Actually, I'll get to that one in a second. It was something else that I was, I was looking at just now. Um, I'm getting a lot music, the music card for the Divine Masculine all the time now, like for weeks now. Music is very important for the Divine Masculine. He's been feeling like God's punishing him. And it's definitely for past life wounding stuff that's coming up, you know, feel his guilt for things he's done in past lives, but he's translating in, it into God wanting to punish him. I also heard, cause butterflies are free to fly. And that was this morning. Fly away, hi away, bye bye. And it was actually when I was bringing in, I had a little plant with two butterfly sticks in it and I was bringing them in cause I knew the snow was coming. And I actually put them in my pink roses, so the two butterflies. Um, and just the beginning of the snow, you know, that's a message, you know, that when the snow starts, it's to come and cover the ground and kill the old to prepare for the new. So that's a big message. Um, we're being urged to follow our intuition. Nature and music, so important. And where I was getting a lot of um, I was getting a lot of major arcana for both the divine masculine and the divine feminine in the days of this past week or two and it just shifted. It's all like minor arcana the past day or two. Okay, so it's actually allowing the individual to have more control over their destiny during these days. When major arcana comes up, it's more divinely orchestrated. So you're kind of free to just do what you want today, not so much divine intervention. So, for the Divine Masculine read, and it was as I began the Divine Masculine read that I got All We Need Is Love. All we need is love. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so I also, as I started the Divine Masculine read, was feeling very choked up between the heart and the throat chakra and getting a lot of stress. And there's another message I got from the cards that he's stretching. Um, stretching, you know, as an expansion. And also just physically stretching, the physical exercise or just physical activity was very important for the Divine Masculine. Okay. So I'm going to read to you the summary and then I'm going to go into the specific cards for more details where new things always come up. Um, the major arcana for the Divine Masculine today are the Hermit and the Emperor. Okay, so there's a bit of a contradiction there, huh? Although the Emperor can be a Hermit. But the Hermit 
you know, doesn't care about being around people. And the emperor thrives on being around people because he gets to rule them. So just learning another side of himself. And that is divinely orchestrated, okay? So you've got the emperor and the hermit, the isolation and the ruler. But the hermit is also a very wise old man, seeing what is important in life, okay? Whereas emperor is all about ego. Spirit's connecting with me. Okay, and it was um, somewhat balanced. There was three cups, three pentacles, two wands, and one sword. And the, the major suits in play in the reed are the king of pentacles, the queen of cups, and the queen of wands. And I'm not including major arcana in these individuals that are, that are present in the spread. He's too sad right now to see the offer of love from God. After illumination of the full moon, about no practical message or offer from this sad woman. There's no offers or no practical messages. He feels like God stuck it to him in calling him in. Calling him in. And the song came up, Killing Me Softly, with his song. <laughs> and then I got a connection when I actually got, when I was doing this, and I heard that song, I got a connection from my twin. Killing Me Softly with his song. And then I saw the Pied Piper in the cards. So he feels like God is the Pied Piper in the situation. Because he doesn't understand why he has to go through this. He's been expressing his love more and noticing sinks and his intuition more. He's slowing down to stay balanced and patient more to himself, wanting to offer love while focusing on finances and relationship change. And that can be a formal relationship change, but it can also relate to his change in relationship with money. In the recent past, he felt the devil was tempting him and had to defend himself. He's been alone trying to make sense of what God wants from him and the Queen of Cups at his side. This also could be the Queen of Cups Virgo shedding light on his unhappiness and lack of passion and sexual frustration. The central issue is rest and meditation and prayer about his twin not speaking to him and the lies and or split at work and or immature communication and not able to get along with others at work. Challenged by holding on to love offer from a third party, but not having pain about it anymore. And also um, betrayal of family. So he's challenged by this love offer from a third party, but also betrayal of family. He is now trying to focus on work. He's uninspired and not getting attention in separation and it feels like his heart's broken. Um, he just just wants it to be done, or just wants to be alone. Family doesn't want him to take a lover, but to be patient and be an angel and be their star. And family definitely feels like they have other options. A break with lover between a, Sag, a Sagittarius and Aquarian, for some, or the patient angel, an emotionally unavailable person in the limelight for others. Standing up to family, no longer waiting for no messages or mean messages. In his energy and wanting this love is the Queen of Cups. Now this could be a water sign, which is uh, Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio, but it doesn't have to be. It can just be someone who's loving and you know, in unconditional love and nurturing. Um, so this is in his energy, this person. But family feels like he has other options. In his environment is the Queen of Wands, looking away, trying to let go of the fight and rise above. It is safe for him to love. He fears those who would come against him, trying to take away what is his. And he's getting to focus on music, domestic harmony, creativity and his intuition and like I said music's been coming up in almost every read and domestic harmony has been coming up a lot this week creativity too and intuition but those are emphasized for him today the outcome is the emperor 
which can be him presiding over the situation between the family and the women, still working too hard, waiting to approach and console twin and express his feelings of passion, third party situation and what to do. He's overwhelmed and unhappy at home because of twin, but there's also the children. He continues to carry the burden of the high priestess and the queen of wands and or secrets about the a queen of wands, which is a fire sign. Okay, so that would be Aries, Leo, Sag Sagittarius. But it can also just be that fiery personality or very active person. It's very physical. This, the emperor could also be a father, a grandfather, a judge, an authority figure who shouldn't be caring for children and or that he is having an affair with a secret fire sign female. So those are the general um, energies from the read. Um, I have a little bit more and then I'm going to go into the formal read for those of you who want to stay. Um, the emperor could be an earth sign or just a powerful businessman hurting his son or his partner. Um, illusions of meditation is a problem for the family, attacking him on these things. Um, sitting alone at night outside thinking of the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Wands and what is right for him. The Queen of Cups and a wealthy family potentially and the Queen of Wands who's defensive but powerful, manlike. He knows he must work somehow despite his emotions and his confusion. So it's very difficult for him right now, you know, because he's going through some turmoil. So now I'm going to go through the formal read. And show you the cards. The underlying energies are the Four of Cups. Okay, and this is very grounding, but not seeing the good in the love that God, God is offering him. And the moon is right underneath that. Okay, so there's some kind of illumination at the full moon that happened already. And it's like, and it has to do with marriage and God. Okay, and it has to do with uh, maybe the divine masculine, you know, sitting outside at night, thinking about things. But ground's a good way to ground. It's clarified by the Queen of Swords reversed and the Page of Pentacles. So the Queen of Swords is already in mourning and sad. She's very articulate and um, truthful, but here she can be very negative or just really truly grieving, you know, not speaking to anyone, okay? And if someone's bothering them, you know how when you feel really wounded and someone interrupts you feeling that, you know, you tend to snap at them. So that's this kind of energy. And then the Page of Pentacles, which is a practical message or maybe a kid offering something maybe to help you snap out of it. So that's the energy. So it could be the divine masculine or the divine feminine, feminine in this energy of, of going through the sadness, but it really is uh, more focused on the divine masculine here. I'm just showing their energy. I'm not getting this as a queen of wands and air sign particularly. I'm getting it to be the, the feeling of grieving and sadness. The other underlying energy from the, and that's the uh, golden universal tarot, the main deck. And then the, the mini, the uh, Rider Waite mini, is the clarification deck. And again, just as a reminder, my main read is all uprights. My clarifiers are uprights and reversed. Okay. So this is what I saw at the bottom of the mini deck, okay, is the underlying energy. So this is the main underlying energy, is the unhappiness, not getting their wish. Okay. But I was seeing this as him feeling like, uh, this was up a little bit more. See, that's the Five of Cups card again. The sadness about leaving something behind. But him feeling like God's sticking it to him, okay? Because he's not getting his wish. And here's God over here, you know, the Pied Piper. You know, calling the shots and everything that's happening to him. The other underlying energy we have from the Romance Angels is paying attention to the red flags. Let's see it closer. It says the signs are cautioning you, but it's also about them noticing synchronicities now. And express your love is underneath that, if you're interested. 
Uh, the other underlying for the Tarot Sexual Magic is the Temperance card. So it's all about balancing the emotions and being patient. And this is also his angels and guides instructing him. And the Knight of Cups is underneath that. So that's really the Divine Masculine trying to be more his true self, you know, wanting to offer love to everyone. So the um, underlying energy for the numerology deck is relationship change. It's number 56. It is all blue. Although the uh, Merkaba isn't, it's more of a, uh, a deep teal emeraldy color. So it's, it's, you know, representing between the heart and the throat chakras. And even higher, because it's a deeper blue, but heart to throat, which, which ties into what I was saying, my feeling was in the beginning of this. They, I feel them being stuck here. You know, can't get it out. And they're having, they feel stress in their chest and, you know, the heart pain. And difficulty speaking their truth. Okay, and this is all about relationship change. And 56 is an 11, which is very spiritual. And the five and six are all about, six is motherly love on the inside, you know, having, if they have kids, you know, feeling that nurturing energy on the inside, but on the outside, you know, feeling all the change, but also being the change on the outside, the change, it's, um, you know, it's excitement, it's, when five is on the outside, it's like the salesman where they know a little about a lot of different things, so it makes them exciting to talk to. And so when the Divine Masculine's thinking about going out into the dating scene again, he's getting that persona again. And that could be dangerous with the Knight of Cups if he doesn't use it wisely. But again, it's an 11. It's very spiritual. So it's about him balancing his heart and his words, really. Underneath that is financial discipline. So it's about also his, his relationship with money and how he needs to change in that respect. Okay. So... In the recent past, he has the Seven of Cups. So this is all about, it's really about dreams, you know, it comes after the Six of Cups, which is the two children in the garden, they finally found each other, they're best friends, and then they have to find things to do that they love to do, you know, so it is a minor card for dreams, but are they illusions? And is it, or are there too many choices? And is it confusing the Divine Masculine? So in the past, it was coming up as, uh, and the spirit's connecting with me. We have the devil here and then the seven of wands. So this is him, him feeling like, like um, he had all, having all these options was like the devil tempting him and feeling the need, you know, to get people to back off. but it was confusing him. And it has to do with the moon energy as well, at the full moon. Maybe something to do with something specific at the full moon when he was trying to ground himself so he doesn't feed into that. Um, the, the foundation of the reed is the hermit. So that's about isolating and thinking and just being alone and seeing the light. Okay, being wise. It could, be the, it could be the Divine Masculine himself, it could be the Divine Feminine shedding light on his situation, it could be um, a grandparent, or just someone older than the Divine Masculine who's very wise, a confident perhaps, but it's clarified by the, key, the Queen of, of Cups. And they were like this. So it's like them looking at, you know, God sticking it to him, and them paying attention for instructions on what to do next. central issue is the Four of Swords. It could be the Divine Masculine not feeling like doing anything and just wanting to rest. And it can be about meditation and prayer as well. And think about what his, his beliefs in, in God are about. You know, we have the, in the stained glass window in the back of this card, there's someone praying to the man above, right? But it also can be the Divine Feminine 
trying to communicate with the divine masculine in the 5D. And a bunch of cards came out with this. Let's see if I can put it up for you all together. So these are the cards that came out. We got the, um, the Emperor, the Two of Wands reversed, the Page of Swords reversed, the Three of Pentacles reversed, and then the Ace of Swords reversed. You know, not very positive energies there. You know, the Emperor's in control. He's benevolent, but he's still the Emperor. It's all about ego for the Emperor. So trying to, he's still trying to maintain control over his life. He's meditating or praying, you know, about, you know, feeling that there's no options with his twin. Okay. There's no conversation, no messages. Maybe a child that's acting up, not speaking to him, or having a very immature conversation, being very annoying or mean. And then we have an issue with either a split at work or some kind of lies at work and not being able to come together with others to work. And this is an issue. And him praying about all these things, all of these issues for him. Or meditating or just resting. The challenge for him is the Four of Pentacles. And, you know, that's all about holding on to things. And it is about being stable. You know, it's mid-cycle. You're saving, you know, so you have a good future one day. So it doesn't have to be negative. But it tends to be holding on to things, superficial things. And it's clarified by the Knight of Cups, the Three of Cups reversed, and the Ten of Cups reversed. So the Ten of Swords reverse is great because that means, you know, we're, we're over it already, the pain, you know, and be whatever betrayal there might have been with third party situation and a love offer, a love offer by a third party. But who's done, who's done with the pain? Or that the Divine Masculine is now over that betrayal or that pain. So the Swords isn't an issue. It's not so much them being in their mind as wanting to hold on to their stuff. That's the challenge. But it's good that he's represented as the Knight of Cups, because that means he's becoming more his true self. In the head and heart of the Divine Masculine, in his now moment, is the King of Pentacles. All right? So the King of Pentacles is an earth sign. It can be Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. But it also can be just someone who's very practical, someone who's very powerful, manifesting money, you know, he's the master of manifest, manif manifesting a life, practical thing, money, okay, so he's actually looking away from the reed, it can be that it can be the divine masculine, but he's above the four swords and the hermit. So it's like, you know, he just wants to lie around and do nothing, but he has to work. You know, he is the king, right? So he can't lose his status. It can also be somebody else in his life, a business partner, um, a sibling, a friend. But it's clarified by the Page of Wands, the Six of, and he's reversed, the uh, Six of Wands reversed, and then the Three of Swords. So the King of Pentacles, it's, it, it's expressing its reverse energies of he's not feeling inspired, he's not getting attention, he's not feeling successful, and he's feeling in separation or brokenhearted. And it, it, it could be something physical, it could be heart issues, but but this, these cards, that's not what I'm getting, because it's more about being inspired and getting attention as opposed to a health issue. Although there is the resting card is the central issue. 
but I'm still not getting that. And so I'm getting more of the broken heart thing. So he's just feeling very dragged down and uninspired, and it's very difficult to work. Or it could be somebody who works with him, who's a problem for him, because they're expressing themselves this way. In the near future is the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, so this is all about family and family legacy. You know, the money, big money. That's like the ultimate dream family, having everything. The love, the family, the wealth. Plenty of things to do, plenty of people around, friends and family. But when you get to that point, it's the 78 in the tarot deck. You know, there's, it's never perfect, right? There's always issues in there, right? There's always an issue with the wealthy family because money brings issues. So it's clarified by the lovers reversed, the temperance card, and the star. I can see them well. Okay. And then the star here. So it's like the family doesn't like the lover and just wants the divine masculine to just be patient. And the this can be Sagittarius and Aquarian too. So the divine masculine could be a Sagittarian or Aquarian or have that aspect in their chart. Or this could be the actual breakup of a Sag and Aquarian or someone who's famous with someone who tends to be, you know, more balanced emotionally and angelic, you know, helpful, has the light. Or they could be two aspects of the same person who's broken up, or even broken up. Well, it is a lover's card, so it tends to be, a, you know, a love relationship. But families here obviously interfering and putting in their two cents about who he should be with. And he's feeling defensive. He feels like he needs to defend himself to everyone attacking him. The In the Divine Masculine's energy here is the Queen of Cups. Okay, so you see she's very loving and nurturing and intuitive. Okay, and kind. And she can be emotional. And she can be sensitive. This is in her emotion. So this it's a it's a water sign, which is Pisces, Cancer, or Scor Scorpio, but could just be a loving person. It doesn't have to be one of those signs. But it's the female who's in his energy. And we have another female in his environment. So it's going to be different for depending on your situation, because in some situations the Queen of Cups could be the twin, and in some situations the Queen of Cups could be the karmic partner. She is clarified by the Ten of Pentacles reversed. So this is accentuating that the family thing is an issue. And then the Seven of Cups. You see the Seven of Cups choice right there? The surprise he's not sure about because he doesn't have enough information about it. That's what scares him because it looks like a ghost. <laughs> but this is where, you know, he's feeling the Queen of Cups in his energy. He feels her and the family does not like this person they feel like he's got much better options than that he could also be the divine masculine expressing himself as the queen of cups you know very sad and more in his feminine you know she'd be the queen of cups reversed which is very you know over emotional could be drinking that kind of thing and then around you know the crazy family you know, with lots of enticements and options, you know, that they're trying to get him to do, but he's not in the mood. Around him, and in his environment, or actually can be how he is seen, is the Queen of Wands with the black cat. So she's looking away from the whole situation. Um, she's clarified by the Nine of Wands reversed, and the Four of Swords reversed. Okay, so which is good. 
This means she's letting go of her wounds and trying to rise above, may not be getting much sleep. Um, but letting go of the fight, like not wanting to fight for it anymore. So again, this person can be both. It could be the Divine Feminine, but it can be the Karmic Partner as well, just depending on your situation. And she's looking away. She's not... The, the, the Queen of Cups in the Divine Masculine's energy is focused on love, but this Queen of Wands is not. She's focused on what's in it for her. And actually, the Romance Angels card that's right next to her is it is now safe for you to love. And now this is the message for the Divine Masculine. But it's also this Queen of Wands trying to rise to that as well. Although not happy about it. Um, the Hopes and Fears position is the Seven of Wands. Okay, that's about standing up for yourself but also being defensive. So being defensive can be negative, right? But you do need to stand up for yourself in a calm way. But he's feeling attacked here, okay? It's clarified by the Seven of Pentacles and the, and the Knight of Swords reversed. They're both reversed. Seven of Pentacles is all about, you know, after you've harvested, harvested, you're waiting and assessing what to do next. So this is reversed, so it's no longer strategizing, no longer waiting, no longer looking at all the things you have and your money and what to do with it. Now you're not waiting anymore. You want to go forward. And this could be going forward in a very nasty way, but it could also be not no longer waiting for no communication or no longer waiting for someone to come through with nasty communication, okay? So this is in his hopes and fears. He's worried about needing to be defensive. He doesn't want to be attacked. He doesn't want to have to defend himself. Um, and then the outcome is the emperor, which I'll show you in a minute, but I want to show you the Tarot of Sexual Magic cards. So this is to the left of the emperor. So the feminine side, we have the, uh, in the middle is the, is the king of uh, swords. We have the four of chalices and the eight of wands. Okay. So the eight of wands obviously is all about passion. And the knight of swords in this deck, you know, is maybe cheating or just having a wandering eye. And then here's two people having a discussion on what to do, what to do next. So, you know, with the emperor, this could be the emperor, you know, this guy with the wandering eye or who has someone on the side, or it could be them not cheating, but with their twin flame waiting for them. And him feeling passion for this other person, but knowing he needs to have a talk with his current partner, whether that's the karmic or the divine feminine um, about what to do about the situation. Where do we go from here? It's on top of all the numerology cards that came out. Okay, these are all the cards. You got four cards. Intuition, creativity, domestic harmony, and music. So it's a nice balanced um, display of colors. The orange is, on both cards, is more of a very, a rooty orange. So it's more grounding and more towards the root as opposed to the sacral sh chakra, although it is sacral chakra. Um, one of them has um, an orange marker, but the other one has yellow. So the music is more between the sacral and the solar plexus, you know, to express yourself. And intuition is more about the root you know, and following your own guidance for your protection. And then creativity is all yellow, which is solar plexus. Again, expressing yourself and your creative talents from, you know, what do you love to do when you were a child? Bring those things out. And that, that'll help you figure out what you want to do for your mission. And then domestic harmony, which is about, you know, just trying to get along with everybody. This is the heart to the throat. It's blue and green. It's about connecting the heart to their words. 
not their mind to their words. They're using their feelings, expressing their feelings, not their thoughts. So it's all of these things, the music and the creativity are helping them to learn that and the intuition. So the numbers, uh, music is 32, which is a five. And it's that, it's the six of wands in the, in the tower deck. So it's about good news and um, success and followers and music. It's the two through the three. It's a five, which is excitement. Two on the inside is the feminine energy and three on the outside is joy and celebration, you know, socializing, music. Um, domestic harmony is 46, which is the six of cups. It's a one, which is the masculine energy, but in a childlike way, the six of cups. It's the motherly energy on the inside and the stability on the outside, like being very sure of yourself and stable on the outside, but a very soft, nurturing person on the inside. And that's domestic harmony. But it's interesting that those two come out as the masculine energy one, but it's really about leadership in the home, domestic harmony. And then creativity is just the three, which is all about communication and self-expression and socializing siblings, okay, which helps with your creativity, you know, when you socialize you get ideas bouncing things off of other people, and when you just express yourself and are joyful, you naturally become creative. Intuition is 22, 22 is a four of stability, structure, building, it's also the early stages of manifestation. And it's about seeing what you get, 22. The two on the inside, two on the outside. And it's all about the feminine energy. So feminine on the inside, feminine and soft on the outside, the mediator, the person who sees both sides of the situation, who's kind and patient, and who comes off as very stable because of this. So I'm going to show you the outcome card and then show you what was to the right of the Dying Masculine. So here's the Emperor. That's the outcome. And the Ten of Wands, I do kind of like a what's happening next is the Ten of Wands card. And that's where I was getting. And Wands are very physical. So here's the Ten of Wands card. So that was coming out to the side, you know, looking. it looked like he was stretching, like exercising. But it's also about still carrying the burdens and working very hard. That's the end of the cycle, it's 10. All the 10s are ends of cycles. So you see we have this 10 of swords in the reed and the 10 of wands. So ending those cycles, and we have the 10 of pentacles, so three 10s. That's a lot of 10s. We have 10 of, a 10 of cups anywhere? Yeah. Um, no, not the 10 of cups, the nine of cups is out. So it's telling you, like, all the cycles are at the end, except for the emotions. Still needs to work a little bit on the emotions because you have the nine, so it's at the end. But the, the ten is basically a transition to the new cycle. The emperor is clarified by the six of cups, which came up just in the, in the numerology deck. The uh, ace of cups reversed, and then, oh, the ten of cups is here. There we go. Ten of, cu ten of cups reversed which is done with the emotions. So we got all four tens on the table, which is amazing. End of a huge end of a cycle. And not the main read, but they are clarifiers, so the energy's there. And the main read was the Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, that was the only ten. It was the Ten of Pentacles in the main read. So the Six of Cups I always see as the twins. You know, it's the innocence of the children, but it can also represent the Divine Masculine's children. The Ace of Cups is is new love, it's also loving yourself, it's also spirituality, but it's reversed. So it's feeling overwhelmed or dumping out a love or a delayed start with a new love. And then the Ten of Cups, the same as, you know, ending a cycle, an, emotion, an emotional cycle with a family and being very unhappy with this family. because They've dumped all of their cups out to start again. It's like starting all over again with children, with the twins. So this is the emperor. 
know, he's feeling, you know, very emotional. And on the right side of him, which is the masculine side, he's got the Nine of Wands and the Two of Swords. All right, so someone offering some consolation to him. Maybe he's got someone around him who, who's a friend or actually likes him and he's not really interested, but they're there to, you know, to talk to. And then the cards that clarify the Ten of Wands coming out the top, like what's to come next, is the High Priestess and the Queen of Wands. So this can be secrets. There's some secrets about the Queen of Wands or that the Queen of Wands has psychic abilities as well. Um, or she can be just very religious. Okay, And this is related to the Ten of Wands coming out of the Emperor. So maybe that's a burden to the Divine Masculine. Or this Emperor could be somebody else. It could be an older person to the Divine Masculine. It could be his father. It could be a father figure. It could be um, a grandparent. It could be a business partner. It could be a judge or just someone who's in charge. You know, But this person could be having an affair. If it is not, if it isn't the mas divine masculine, um, but it's related. If it isn't the divine masculine, it's definitely related to the divi divine masculine. Like a, it seems like a fatherly figure, but it just could be someone who's who's got that persona of being in charge. Okay. So, the energies. You know, there's a lot of sadness. The divine masculine is still going through. They're processing their emotions, which is great. They might, they not, they may not feel or see it that way, but um, and then the emperor still being in the reed, which is is still a control issue, you know, letting go of the ego. But they're working on it, and they're getting all their connections with the sinks and the intuition and the music and the creativity, which is right where they need to be, you know, that's the, the right they're on the right path. So it is positive overall. But just for the Divine Feminine to be patient with the Divine Masculine and allow this to send love in the 5D, okay? And just let them know you're there, but don't bother them, you know? They just need to do their own thing. They have to work out their own issues. And it just stresses them out when the Divine Feminine tries to reach out because they can't handle it right now. And now I'm going to pick some... Uh, oracle cards for the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine. This is the Ascension deck. So I'll do one for the Feminine, then one for the Masculine. And see what's coming up. Clear, clear, clear. Clear, clear, clear. Okay, so for the Divine Feminine, for the Organic Divine Feminine Twin Flames, what is the advice? What is the advice for the Organic Divine Feminine Twin Flames? What is the advice? And Marco comes out. And the bottom of the deck, in case you're interested, is the Mahatma energy. That's number six, which is the lovers. I invoke the Mahatma energy to flow through me. That's the affirmation. The card that was picked for the Divine Feminine is Marco. Marco is 47, and the affirmation is, I am open to wisdom from the stars. 47, again, is 11. It's very spiritual. It is the Seven of Cups in the Tarot, which is that the card of options and choices and dreams, and it can be illusions as well. It's the Seven of Spirituality on the inside, working through the stability on the outside, and looking like a responsible person on the outside but being calm, quiet, and spiritual on the inside. Um, Master Marco represents the highest galactic confederation of our solar system, the capital of which is on Saturn. He liaises with Commander Ashtar of the intergalactic fleet to bring us the wisdom and knowledge held by stellar cultures. He also assists Hilarion, and I'm connecting, uh, on the fifth ray of technology, science, and knowledge. That's important for the, for the Divine Feminine. Okay. He also assists Hilarion with on the fifth ray of technology, science, and knowledge to enable people to expand their higher mental abilities and develop spiritual technology for the future. So there may be some downloads for you. Your guidance is to open your mind to communications and connections from other star systems and universes and ask Marco to assist and protect you. And again, the affirmation is, I am open to wisdom from the stars. 
Okay, so maybe the divine feminine is being called to, to some kind of research in those areas to assist the divine masculine when they come into union. Technology, science, and knowledge. That's the fifth ray. Now for the divine masculine, what is the organic divine masculine twin flames advice? Oh, the whole deck wanted to fall down. What is the, oh, there we go. The moon for the divine masculine. The bottom of the deck is Hilarion. Okay. Uh, Hilarion, in case you're interested, is 46, which came up again. That's the third time it's come up. Affirmation to open myself to the wisdom and guidance of Hilarion. And again, 46 is the Six of Cups, the two children in the garden. Divine Masculine got the moon, which is also an 11. This is the base 11. It's the master 11. So it's very spiritual. It's all about angel guidance and the twins and... Uh, and union and the moon is all about feminine wisdom fem feminine energy so it reads this is for the divine masculine the moon is the causal chakra of the universe and radiates divine feminine energies call on it to cleanse your aura and energize you remember the influence of the celestial body is always there whether you can see it or not when you're offered this card you're called on to practice your feminine qualities of love wisdom compassion intuition inclusiveness discernment and oneness. Your guidance is to go within and seek answers from your huge font of wisdom. The moon will bring you clarity so that you can flow with the current of ascension. Okay, so the divine masculine is encouraged to express their feminine side, their emotional side, their loving, patient, compassionate, with wise, intuitive, side, their oneness side, and be discerning. So not to allow people in their life who are not for their highest purpose, who are not uh, contributing to their higher purpose. They're actually going against his grain. Okay. So they were both 11s. Now we have the uh, past life deck. I'm going to do for the Divine Feminine first. For the the organic divine feminine twin flames, organic divine feminine twin flames, we get spells. Okay, um, and also authority figures wanted to come out with it. The gavel. So there may be some court issues, or it could just be that the divine feminine spouse in a karmic relationship. Um, there's a problem with authority there. Okay, the bottom of the deck is unrequited love. So the Divine Feminine may be feeling that if they're still in a karmic marriage, that they need to uh, maybe release some prior wounds dealing with authority figures and marriage. You know, that could have to do with church authority figures as well, since it has to do with marriage. And it can have to do with divorce. So it's just basically accentuating that this is unrequited love and to take care of it and clear this wound about authority figures. For the Divine Masculine, Divine Masculine, Organic Divine Masculine Twin Flames. What is the issue? We're clearing the cards, clear, clear, clear. Now give us the, uh, what is the advice for the Divine, Organic Divine Masculine? Oh, there we go. Imprisonment or slavery? <laughs> And this card's coming out with it as well. Leaving or travel. And the bottom of the deck is high priest or priestess. Okay, so the divine masculine, you know, they're feeling imprisoned. And, the, you know, the eight of swords has been coming up pretty regularly. It didn't come up today. But it's been coming up pretty regularly the past couple weeks. So freeing themselves by taking a trip. Okay, imprisonment, it could be a past life wound or release as well to clear about being imprisoned or being a slave and needing to travel and kind of being a loner because of that is what I'm picking up and spirit's starting to connect with me on that. 
um, really connecting. And that might be a wound for the Divine Masculine. Because of feeling imprisoned, he now had to live a life of solitude. And the High Priest or Priestess is coming up, so, you know, which is accentuating that, and vows, and Spirit's still connecting with me to break those vows, any vows from past lives, to clear them, and cut cords with all of them, say, you know, renounce all prior vows that you've made with intent. Because we're, we're being called to no longer commit to vows, that they're, no, they're not necessary. You don't, you know, God wants you to live in joy, not in restriction. So to cut those cords, and if you need a break, if you've just gotten out of prison, <laughs> you're supposed to take a vacation, or maybe that's what you're already doing. For the Divine Masculine. And interesting, when I looked at this card again, it made me think of the movie Split. Okay, so that, that might be another um, message for you, that there is a split, but also the multiple personalities. That, you know, that there's, and in Split, you know, his... The, the scary guy that comes out at the end is just a manifestation of that same person. It's just one of his personalities. It's the shadow side of his personality. And saying to be careful because when imprisoned, it can bring out the worst in you. And just to know that and forgive yourself that you aren't the monster that that movie portrays that person to be. Because another aspect of him is this funny little boy, you know, or his gay personality, or his, the guy who wants to be in control personality, or the one who wants to shop. So everyone has all, these, all of these different personalities, and you're to forgive yourself for your shadow side, because everyone has their shadow side. It's the dark and the light. It's just the balance in that. And, uh, you know, being your best light, bringing more light into your life, and accepting yourself and forgiving yourself and others. So a reminder to do that. Okay. But it might be just about a split from imprisonment or slavery. And for, for some, it might have to do with a split personality. So let me know in the comments if that's true for you. Because it comes up a lot that the divine, you know, the divine masculine and the divine feminine, that we portray all of the suits in the deck. That we are each all of them. We're not really specific to one even regardless of what where your planets are. So this is for, um, we're doing the Divine Feminine first for the, uh, the Journey of Love. Uh, for the Divine, the Organic Divine Feminine Twin Flames. Organic Divine Feminine Twin Flames, and this came out the top. Blood Dance. And the Breaking. And then the void one to pop out too. Let's see, the bottom of the deck is intimacy. Okay, which is 35, which is an eight. It's excitement and change on the inside, which can make you nervous, through joy on the outside. Intimacy. So this again for the Divine Feminine. The main card that came out was the blood dance. And it's number 42. And I wanted to tell you, too, I put down the time that I put out the cards. I believe it was 10.42. What is that? Yeah, it was 11. 11.42 was the time I put out the main read to 11.57 was the end. And I usually mark my reads by the end of the read. You know, I put out all the clarification cards. And 42 was the Two of Cups, and 57 was the Three of Swords. So it kind of marks, you know, the sadness for the Divine Masculine today in relationships, in one-on-one -on -one relationships. The Blood Dance 42 is 42 again. is about the Two of Cups. It is a six, which is about love, family, and community. It's the feminine energy on the inside, working through stability on the outside, you know, 
being feminine, but then being strong and stable on the outside for the family to create that family dynamic energy. And I'll tell, I'll read that for you in a moment. But the breaking was also trying to pop out. It was right next to the, to the blood dance. So I want to show that to you. The breaking is 65, which is another 11. It's the five of excitement through the six of love, family, and community. And then mid-deck, the void was pop, popped out completely separate from the, from the deck. So I wanted to show you that as well. And the void is also all about going, balancing, going back to zero point. The vortex, the void, whatever you want to call it. It's number 40, and, four, and 40 is actually the page of cups, the innocence of love void. How perfect is that? So I'll see what I can get through. It's already over an hour, so. Five, five, five. Okay. It was an hour and five minutes, 55 seconds when I looked. So those fives are really come up, coming up because today is the five of wands. It's just you're being warned not to react to things. I didn't really read you the mail headings. I'll, I'll have to read them to you as well. So first is the blood dance, 42. And that reads, the heart craves life and the blood responds. In relationship to each other, life happens. The desire and the action, the movement of cycles, drawing in and letting go, rushing to the center and pushing far away to the extremities is the cycle of the relationship dancing between self and other into oneness, into individuality. So it is with human beings in relationship with each other and with human beings in the divine essence. And spirits connecting with me. Sometimes the heart of God feels so close. It's as though our own inner passion is the very blood rushing through it. And then we journey far. Spirits connecting again, bringing our nourishment to where it is needed, to those who are cold and lonely, to the farthest reaches of our own dark self, that we may, if very brave, dare to love completely. Though we can be lonely for the warmth of the center then, craving that feeling of being at home, soon enough we are called back to the core of the divine heart, still connecting, and the cycle continues. Remember that you are always in this dance of life. You are never apart from the divine. It is just that sometimes in our natural flow, it is easier to feel that divine presence than other times, yet you're always the blood connected to the heart. The oracle brings your confirmation that you're connected to the divine source, to all that is. If you're experiencing a phase of feeling cut off from yourself, from your body, from another, or from the divine, even from your own feelings, spiritual connection, or intuition, be reassured that this is temporary and part of the cycle of life itself. Soon all connections shall return with even greater warmth and nourishment, welcoming you home again with great love. If you feel you've been journeying in life and fear that you've lost your way, do not trouble yourself, precious soul. You're never far from the divine heart and will always be called home. The poem reads, Love's language speaks like sound of falling leaves, caressing wind to bear aroma sweet. You ask if I can love and measure true and give emotions weight the scales do. Each tear releases more than words can say, expressing all my heart wants to convey. So a big reminder for the Divine Feminine, when you, you know, you can feel so connected, you know, we go through these portals and the full moon and the new moon and the eclipses and you feel so connected. And then in between at times you can feel so disconnected from source that when you're meditating you're not really connecting, even though you're trying. And just knowing to allow all of that. So if you're not feeling connected, just allow it that day, then it's okay. You're meant to go out to the extremities and help others those days, you know and not to be afraid that it's never gonna come back. It's all about the cycle of life, life and death, the blood flowing, you know, heaven and earth. It's just the balance, it's all about the balance. It's about you being balanced between joy and sadness. You know, that's the heart and the extremities. It's just coming back to zero. The page of cups, <laughs> the innocence of love, being pure and joyful. So, the breaking is 65, let's see here. So I'm not going to read the void again, since we know about the void. The void is about 
being balanced in love in joy in the present moment because when you look back you see pain when you look forward you see lack stay present in order to manifest your dreams the breaking is 65 and that reads and this is still for the divine feminine you are breaking apart you might not understand it at all there's not so much to be understood but the simplicity doesn't mean it's easy to endure you may worry that you're going too far that you may not recover or ever come back together again but what can you do can you hold back from the divine love that calls you that lures you to becoming all that you are to remembering your divine nature well you could try but for what purpose temporary rest before the storm is best so take your rest if you need it then dive into the storm let yourself be brokenhearted by the divine so that you can become your truth become all you are meant to be it is better to have to have the broken to have the heart broken so that it grows than to be brokenhearted by thinking that you must protect yourself from love this oracle brings compassionate guidance that no matter what sadness or anger despair or frustration you may feel you're being pulled apart not by dark forces but by the loving embrace of the divine as it strips you of that which would keep you from your divine realization let go and break and spirits connecting with me it is going to be the making of you so it's just reiterating that we're being broken down to rebuild ourselves and to allow it all the happiness and the sadness because you're when you're clearing your wounds you're going to be sad allow it allow the tears allow the anger don't take the anger out on anyone but if you need to punch a pillow punch a pillow as long as it's not hurting somebody else get those frustrations out if you need to you're learning to master all of those feelings you know that's the more you do this the quicker the circle is you know we get into the vortex you start out it's a big circle of pain you know it takes you a long time to bounce back and as you go closer and closer you bounce back really quick you know you can be like in the pits of despair one minute and a minute later you're fine <laughs> once you get to the vortex and it spin very quickly that's when you come into union so the poem is love love is a special closeness that sings from the heart that warms my days and night and spirit still connecting with me that feels good that makes me smile that makes me glad to be alive okay and then for the divine masculine we'll pick a card so remember to stay present in the void stay present means see what's right in front of your nose don't think about what's behind or in front of you or what the outcomes are let go of the outcome don't need to know just need to know what's right in front of you at this moment and if it needs to be a bowl of ice cream so be it keep yourself in joy and when you need to release allow yourself to cry allow it all this is for the organic divine masculine twin flames organic divine masculine twin flames what is the advice well, two fell out and the bottom of the deck is the cloak That's 50, for those of you who'd like to know. And the two cards that fell out are Burning Hero, which is number three, and the Swan, which is number 67. So three, of course, you know is about joy and self-expression and socializing, celebrating. And this is for the Divine Mask, and I'll read that first. Burning Hero. And I love that combination of the burning hero and the swan. The burning hero is becoming the swan. Okay, so this reads, From the transformative fires of life's tests, you emerge now stronger in self-belief, overcoming self-doubt and fear, and shedding the layers that, you've held, that have held you back from burning as a naked flame of divine love. Can you perceive the coolness fast approaching to soothe your fire-weary soul? Peace is coming to you now, a respite from the fire, before you're ready to burn into love again. <coughs> My masculine had a little bit of trouble speaking about that. <coughs> that was like, like specifically caught in my throat. Um, the intensity of fire exists in relationship to cool serenity 
and you're capable of experiencing both. Your inner fire has pushed you forward and your creativity, self-expression will manifest into the most beautiful forms. This is assured. You burn bright now, and yet it will be the cooling of your soul embers that replenishes you and inspires you to new creative depths and heights in due time. The Oracle brings you a message. From the heat of your labor, sweet success will arise, and you can act now as if that success has already been made manifest. It is only a matter of time before it is so. From that success, and Spirit's connecting with me, new levels of experience and creative manifestation will take place. You are in a powerful creative cycle of intensity and serenity, dancing with each other through your heart, like the sweet relationship of night and day. This cycle yields great harvest. Spirit's connecting with me again. Offer yourself in contribution to the greater good, and your harvest will not will be not only of earthly delight, but of heavenly blessings too. Okay, so it's kind of like, it's kind of related to the phoenix rising. You know there's a purpose for the rise and the fall. That you were being broken down to be built back up into the authentic you. And the poem reads, always, feeling your love in every cell of my being. I open my soul, becoming one in your embrace. How rich the moments shared, I savor every one. And even when apart, your love envelops me with knowing we are complete. Together like a new day, we are born. Okay. So that's Burning Hero, the Divine Masculine. And then the other one is the Swan, which is number 67. That's a four, which is about stability and structure and building and manifesting. Okay, so where are you, 67? Okay, the swan, for the divine masculine. Gliding with grace, nothing is withheld from this beautiful soul. It can discern what is genuine, authentic, loving, and what is from the ego parading. Even though the most impressive words or gestures, this soul can sense the withholding within of a core of fearful separation from the divine. With grace, it allows all to be and moves amongst this world with inspiring light and grace. Paramahamsa, great swan, the soul that moves the souls of others is reaching to you now. The guru, the teacher, the light, the love that is all, you are blessed by sacred divine relationship with the essence of love itself that adores you and wants only for you to be free. This oracle reaches to you now, indicating that you were held within the grace of great soul, a teacher of the heart of the spirit, and spirit's connecting with me again, and there's endless light bestowed upon you for protection. Your path ahead is assured. Soon you'll be shifting from hope to a sense of inevitability in your attainment of the spiritual goals closest to your heart. Be with your practice of love. Through meditation, yoga, kindness, nature, dancing, singing, whatever speaks to your heart, and know, you are, and know you are one with the divine, and it's only a matter of time before you realize it. And the poem reads, to love from afar, all we share our dreams of what will unfold. Okay. So it's about having faith that when you're not feeling it, not feeling the divine presence, whether that means God to you, whether it means source energy, it doesn't matter what the label is, it's all the same, it's the same, it's love that runs through all of us. We are all love, we're all God. So no matter how you wanna look at it, it's, we're not talking about this in a religious sense, when we talk about the Christ energy, we're not talking about it in a religious sense. We're talking about in, in the loving nature of the Christ energy. And that it's not about sacrifice, it's about love. When you do things for someone else because of love, it's not felt like a sacrifice. It, you feel love to do that. That's, that's what sacrifice is supposed to mean. It's not supposed to mean to your detriment. It's all about love. And when you question this journey, always go back. Love and fear, they're mutually exclusive. If you're in fear, you're not in love. And this is all about manifesting love. Love equals abundance, abundance. It's the dance. 
of coming back to zero, coming back to, to balance and the vortex, to your peace. That's how you create abundance. You allow the flow. It's going with the flow. It's allowing everything and not resisting, not getting frustrated or angry because that's resistance. That's blocking you. You need to be allowing at all times. That's how you create your greatest abundance, not being afraid, knowing that the things that you're challenged with, it's okay. It's going to work out. It's like... Um, you know, I grew up always worrying about being on time because my mother was totally stressed out all the time. She had a bad temper. And so, for example, if she had to wait for me more than five minutes, picking me up at high school, she would leave without me, and it took an hour for me to walk home. So I grew up with that, that stressful need to, to always be early so that I wouldn't be left. And then I get a confirmation there for you. We don't need to hold that stress. You know, we're taught to feel stressed all the time. I worked at University of Penn for 25 years. I managed multiple research projects in radiology. And it's constant stress. You know, you're working for, I was working for 13 different physicians. There you go. <laughs> um, and it's always the stress of uh, making sure you don't do something wrong or get in trouble or get somebody mad or. You know, when you're dealing with so many people and so many projects, you know, each project I did was like running a small business. And you're living on stress. And we're learning to completely de-stress. Not worry about being on time to get to the airport that if for some reason you don't make it there, there's a reason for it. It's all okay. Um, when I went to the retreat in the south of France, all the synchronicities, you know, it was my test to myself to just go with the flow, allow, don't worry about traveling abroad by yourself, and whatever happens, happens, it's all good. You're, all, you're taken care of as long as you go with the flow. And I get to the airport, my, I was worrying that my bag might be overweight, but I just said, you know, whatever, if I have to pay for it, I have to pay for it, it's fine. And it ended up being 50 pounds exactly. And then my gates were 88 and eight. And it just went on and on like that during my whole trip, because when you allow don't expect anything. You don't look for the outcome. You allow the universe to give you what they already know you want. If you resist any of it, you block. So it's a practice in that. We're mastering. We're mastering our emotions, our thoughts. We're mastering um, how we effort. You know, you should only effort when you're inspired to do so. That's allowing. If you're pushing yourself to do something you don't want to do, you're blocking yourself. Don't do it. Um, and then manifestation. We're learning to master manifestation, which is the balance between the, mas the masculine and the feminine. Because you need both to master manifestation. You need the creativity, the spark, and then the, the other energy that actually makes it, and you know, puts it in reality. So, anyway, just a little extra stuff there. I hope everyone um, just remembers all of, all of this when you're going through the, these, these tough energies. You know, I, I'm not immune to this. I'm still going through purges, crying my eyes out, not sure if I want to be here anymore, and then the next minute I'm fine. So um, it's real for all of us. And it's, you know, don't focus on your twin. You know, certainly send love and support through the 5D, but just focus on yourself and how to make yourself joyful and how to master these things. This is your challenge. How to master joy. Not such a bad, bad lesson to learn, right? To just go with the flow. Allow. That you will always be provided for. You know, when you're lacking. I've talked to so many twins who've given me examples of, you know, when they're strapped and have no money, you know, someone or something comes through right at the right time. And it's fine. Every time. Because you trust and allow is hard for people in this stressful world, which is why we're taken out of those 3D jobs, to trust and allow. You're being put in a position to do that. The injuries, all of it is part of it. And the universe trying to get you to slow down, stop, and be still, and be present. Okay? So have an amazing week. Again, um, I'm away with my daughter traveling a lot, so I may not put anything out next week. 
Um, if I do, I'll try to do something with my daughter, with what I told you about, and uh, the uh, the child of the twin flame journey experience. And um, in the meantime, you know, just enjoy yourself. I know you guys are all getting ready for the holidays, and just really feel what the spirit of the holidays is about. You know, help someone out. You know, go to a soup kitchen if you want to. It doesn't even have to be something formal like that. To just be helping out your kids or your family or your friends. Um, but just be love everywhere you go. It shouldn't wait for Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever religious day it is. It doesn't matter. Every day, be love. Okay? So I love you all. Take care. Be happy. Have a great holiday if I don't talk to you or see you between now and then. And rise and be love. Take care, everyone. Love you all. Bye.